Hey internet, uh, this is the as promised follow-up part two video of my lithium ion conversion for my uh, 2020 Polaris Ranger EV. Um, yeah, we've made some progress here. Uh, not a lot from the exterior, except for this beer. Ended up replacing that button with something a little bit beefier, but same, same idea. Hold that down, turns on the BMS while holding it down, turn the key, and that gives you sustained power to the system. I was thinking about how to make that cleaner, and, and honestly, if you wanted to, maybe the better way to do it is actually wire in that initial um, BMS on signal to the brake pedal so you could sit down hold your foot on the brake which would turn on the bms and then turn the switch i may actually do that someday but for now it for now it's working actually pretty well um i guess the big news is is a charger although not a, not a whole lot to look at same color as the uh as the old one though uh part of what took so long to get this second part up was um, I was running into some issues with the charger and uh, can't say it's a rarity, but it ended up being user error. Uh, I was cheating. I don't have a lot of power out here on the ranch. So I was using a portable power supply initially to test the charger and it was just acted all crazy and not charging the batteries or turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. And after a lot of back and forth with um, the sales folks in China, I uh, realized it was actually just user error. And once I plugged it into mains power, everything uh, worked as expected. But of course, before I figured that out, I'd actually ordered another charger just to confirm that it that uh, actually wasn't the charger itself that was failing. And that one I got off of Amazon also was acting crazy off of my portable power supply. Um, so don't try that. Always make sure you're hooked up to actual grid power or a, a real good off-grid power if you're going to be testing these chargers. Um, installation, super simple. I ended up ordering one of these kind of semi-cheapo brackets off of Amazon just to hold it down. And uh, I just added a few few small holes to that plate. And try to keep as much of the factory wiring as possible. Here's that, I forget the name of it. I think it's a Delta Q connector. So you can actually order all of the parts. Um, and I'll give a shout out to you. Um, it's nice folks on eBay who, who helped me trace those part numbers. I'll put those in the part descriptions as well. And then here, um, I just taped on this cap and that's got that jumpered connection that um, disables that, that lockout that I mentioned before. And, uh, oh yeah. And so then you're gonna get mains power. There's a lot of places you could put it. I moved it from its original location. I wanted something that was sort of uh, almost in the way. So you're always going to remember to unplug it before you start driving. So I figured, uh, it's an easy place to remember to plug it in. And when that cable's plugged in, you really can't even get in the car. Uh, so it's, you'll always remember to unplug it. Um, and beyond that, I'll, I'll, um, get into more detail in a second, but there's this kind of accessory box that I end up adding and that is going to perform a few extra safety tasks um, mainly to do with the charger so that uh, while it's charging you can't drive the vehicle and while it's charging um, the BMS is active. So um, I don't think there's much else to go over here. I'll jump in and talk more about that this little custom box. After I got the charger installed, I still had two problems. Uh, one was 
some uh, lithium batteries, the BMS has an internal wake function. So if it detects an AC signal coming in, it'll automatically uh, wake up the BMS and, and allow the battery to charge. The BMS on, on these batteries did wake when it detected an incoming charge, but it wouldn't stay awake. They would eventually fall asleep and the charger would just keep getting stuck in a loop um, trying to wake the BMS up. So I needed to turn on the BMS and keep it on when a charger was present. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do, which may not be required for all installs, is uh, I wanted to add a, a level of safety so that if the charger was attached um, and charging, that the vehicle would be um, inoperable. And again, mainly for people who maybe aren't super familiar with the setup or just to prevent accidents. Uh, and part of the reason this took so long was finding the right parts. I wanted to control um, some relays with an AC input, but I was controlling a uh, 48 volt output in the, in the case of the switch. So that was uh, hard to find and I'll put the link in the description, uh, but I ended up finding these power control relays and, uh, and I think they work great. So before I button everything up, I just wanted to show you what I'm doing here. You can see the main AC line coming in, and that's um, getting split, yeah, maybe a little bit ghetto. And that's gonna continue out here to the charger, so the charger's power is uninterrupted. And at the same time, I'm splitting off my um, positive and neutral to go to both of these relays. Uh, the nice thing about these relays is they have both normally open and normally closed connections. So for this lower relay, it's actually controlling, um, it's overriding in parallel the BMS switch that I've wired into the back of the dash um, via this connection here. So when AC is present, this will turn the BMS on. The other thing that's happening is when AC is present, I'm using the normally... Um, closed position to ensure that if AC turns on that this key switch, um, I believe this is 92 and 94 red, uh, the main power coming into the key switch will be disconnected if AC is present. And that way, um, anyone going to try to start and drive the vehicle uh, when the charter is plugged in won't be able to. Uh, anyway, again, I'm getting this all tidied up and put away, but I just wanted to show this before I did that. Okay, so got the uh, accessory box all buttoned up, um, although I need to figure out a better way to mount it. Um, and you can see that connection there to the key switch, and then the connection on this side going to that uh, BMS button on the dash. And now, if we come around, I'll show you how this, how this works. I have my mains power here, and if I plug that in, wakes up the battery and starts charging, although it's been charging, so it won't run for very long. Um, and you'll notice now here too, even though the BMS is on, if I turn the switch, there's absolutely nothing. No lights come up on the dash and and uh, car won't go anywhere. But if I turn that off and pull the charging cable out, BMS dies, but now we should be able to start the vehicle as normal and now my lights come on and and we're ready to go. Just a quick note based on one of the questions that was asked. I haven't done any proper range tests yet. I'll Maybe uh, later on I'll do a long range or long term review and give some notes after, I don't know, six months of use. But so far no complaints really. You can see I, I've still yet to calibrate the display. That's just out of sheer laziness, um, too busy with other projects, but I'll, I'll get around to that. Otherwise, um, yeah, I mean, I've been putting it to work all day and was even working before that, uh, before its previous charge and it's still at 53. So pretty, pretty happy 
already and um but i'll do some i'll do some proper tests that'd be fun at some point i think that concludes this project uh it was a bit of a beast just getting the final details of the charger down actually i think that was more complicated than than installing the batteries themselves but um as usual i'll put all the parts lists in the description with links and if you have any questions give a shout all right thanks so much